Hey guys, Spud here, as always. And today I wanted to make a quick and dirty video to show you guys a little update to the flares and the flare effects in DCS world as of what I believe is DCS 2.8. Now, as I'm sure you guys all know, there are a lot of little changes and additions that kind of sneak in under the radar and don't necessarily make it into the change log. Now, I'm pretty sure that this update and change to the way the flare effects work in DCS uh, definitely made it kind of under the radar. But I'd love to know in the comment section down below if maybe this has been around a little bit longer than I think it has. But it's something that I've noticed as I start flying helicopters a little bit more. Keep in mind that this change to the flare effects affects both fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft and is not uh, exclusive to one or the other. So with that in mind, let's hop into our MI-24 hind here. We'll get her started up and we'll go for a little flight here and show you guys some of the changes to the flares, which are pretty darn cool. And it's something that uh, I've really wanted in DCS for the flares for a while now. And it's something that I think could be pretty cool for all of you guys out there who love making cinematics in DCS. So let's go for it. All right. First things first, we've got to get rid of the seat so we can actually see what we're doing here all the circuit breakers up because the Russians love circuit breakers bup, bup. rectifiers we're gonna have to shut up bitchin babushka in a second here bup, bup, bup. and off please thank you nope hey off thank you all right we got that guy off da -da -da. no external power apu gen definitely needs to go on all right, we'll turn the rotor brake off. Every time I try to start up the hind, I just go straight from this panel right to the rotary brake. So that way, when I try to start up the engines, I'm not like, what in the heck is going on here? And I start from the front of the cockpit here on the left wall, moving aft, get all these fuel pumps on. I just go ahead and turn the external tanks on, just in case I do have them on there so I don't forget. Then we will come down to our APU. And we'll start up the old Apu. Looks like we got a little bit of rain here. And as I'm sure you guys noticed on the outside of our helicopter today, we've got ourselves the beautiful Empire of Paran Air Force skin. One of our fictional countries that we're running a big old campaign with a nice fun storyline in. So big thanks to Bumble Fox for creating this fun little skin for our EPAF MI-24 hind. AP is good to go. I'm always in the habit of starting my right-hand engine in all of the modules in DCS first. So we'll go ahead and we'll crank number dose. Something that I'm sure you guys have also noticed, which is pretty darn cool here, is I have a little mod that passes integrity check that allows me to see everything in knots and feet as well as my vsi over here is also in feet and we get a nice little like caution range here to show us when we should expect to tumble out of the sky as the mi-24 likes to do when we get fast or slow i should say and it looks like our blades are starting to do the womp womp thing Beautiful. Let's crank number one. Site power. Auto. Auto. Bring the sight glass down just a little bit. Not too much. I found lately that I don't like to have the sight glass all the way down like I used to when I was first learning helicopters in DCS. So I don't know what my deal is with that. I do find it kind of interesting, the inconsistency between the engines are labeled engine one and two on our RPM gauges, as well as our rotor RPM gauge. And then we've got 
engine left and right labeled down here on the engine crank panel. It's a funny little inconsistency there. And we can see the sun's come out a little bit. I love it in DCS when it's raining and sunny at the same time. Okay. I'm gonna start to get some more systems on here. Leave that guy off so that way we don't have that blaring in our ears. Add a little bit of right rudder, or left rudder, I should say. We will hit the trimmer switch. We'll start to bring our engines up to full RPM so that way we can get all of our electrical systems online and going. I love Jester's voice in the English version of uh, the MI-24 here. It's awesome. <laughs> it sounds like I have um, Borat in my front seat. All right, APU is coming down. And we'll set up our flares. Everything looks good on the flares for our Uh, we'll go ahead and make sure we get this guy on. Okay, well, let's go for a gentle lift off here, and that way we won't get too fast. Oh, of course, we got to turn on our fan. We don't want to get too sweaty in our cockpit here. And just like always in helicopters, I like to have my parking brake on on my wheels, just so that way I'm not skittering across the taxiway here as I'm trying to lift off. A little bit of that was a little rough. There we go. Retrim her out a little bit. And if you're wondering here how we were able to lift off pretty vertically in our hind, we just went for a takeoff with only about 50% fuel. And we can see in our shadow, our gear is up, matched by our handle position, all that good stuff. Okay. Interesting that and the hind at slow speeds flies more like what I would expect a helicopter to fly as, but the Apache is the opposite. And then they're the opposite again when it comes to high speed flight. Kind of interesting. All right. Well, anyway, let's do the flares thing. So I don't know if you guys notice it as we look at these flares. It's kind of subtle, but kind of cool at the same time. Is Here, yeah, let's make sure that we don't fall out of the sky, because that wouldn't be a great way to have the video go. But I don't know if you guys are noticing it, but the flares are not simply just falling through the ground into oblivion and hitting the water underneath the ground that lives in DCS world, but rather the flares are impacting the ground and they are burning out the rest of the way on the ground. Now this may seem kind of stupid that I'm that excited about it, but I think it's a pretty cool effect. And I think it's something that, uh, like I said, a lot of you guys who make cinematics and stuff, it could be a very cool effect for those kind of cinematic videos in DCS. So let's try it again here. We're a little high. Let's see if we can get a flare to impact the ground before it burns out. Yep, maybe, nope. <laughs> we got to get a little lower. And like I said, guys, this does affect the fixed wing aircraft as well. But you're going to be going so fast, so close to the ground, that you may not even notice it. So let's try and get low. We'll get slow again. Behind, she don't like to go slow. But it was funny because I was, you know, flying with some other guys in the Apache, and I was like, wait a second the flares are actually impacting the ground. And so I don't know, I guess it's cool because 
if you watch the old IMAX film, I think it's called Fighter Pilot, about an F-15E pilot participating in red, participating in red flag. There's some really cool shots of A-10s in IMAX flying real low over the NTTR, and they were popping flares. The flares were impacting the ground. And they were actually skipping off the ground and bouncing back up into the air. Whoop. Starting to get some VRSE there. We got a little wind. But anyway, I'm not trying to fly very well. I'm just trying to show you guys flares impacting the ground. <laughs> Look at that. Pretty cool, right? A small thing, but a cool thing. And like I said, I think most people aren't even going to notice this, but... It'd be really cool for you guys who are making cinematics of helicopters or A-10s down low. Things like that. So let's just pop a couple more flares here, and we'll see. There we go. See that? Pretty cool. Be kind of cool if in the future, Eagle Dynamics could model it so we could actually start some brush fires around the map with a uh, couple flares that hit the ground and burned out. As I'm sure you guys know, a lot of the ranges out there, especially in the NTTR where it's very dry and very desolate place, fires get started all the time as a result of pyrotechnics from aircraft, so namely flares. Sometimes chaff can start fires as well, but not nearly as uh, easily. And so fire crews are basically always on standby during, you know, big exercises like Red Flag and the like, just so that way they can go out there and put fires out for exactly the same reason we just saw. As well as, you know, when a flare burns itself out, there's still some material that drops down onto the ground that's very hot and very flammable that can cause a fire even if the flare is totally burned out. So kind of interesting stuff here, guys, and uh, thanks for bearing with me with my crazy nerdiness and enjoying this little tiny piece of DCS world with you guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Of course, guys, please enjoy this uh, beautiful game. As you can tell, I really definitely enjoy it.